Hi, it's just me typing away with my two fingers, working very hard. <laughs> I've always known that I type like this and I literally look down and stare at my fingers on the keys all the time instead of looking up at the screen while I'm writing. But I've never seen myself typing from the outside like this actually. This is my first ever YouTube video, baby. More on that later. First, I gotta explain the two finger typing. I think it's because I was born in 1982 and I'm somewhere between late Gen X, early millennial, Xennial or whatever. And that's why I never learned touch typing. So typing with all 10 fingers, thumb on the space bar, looking up at the screen, etc. Because typing on keyboards went through a kind of puberty at the same time as I did. Typewriters, even the electrical ones, they were already on their way out in the late 1990s, but my high school only got computers in the year I graduated, 2002. I simply missed out on good old-fashioned typing classes during my formative years. Too bad. I taught myself and this is the result. And then later, as a university student, I simply didn't have time for computer typing courses. I'd always rather read. I studied literature, language, culture, so the reading lists were long, as were my commutes on trains and buses all over Europe and North America. I read and read and read. And I continued writing down my lecture notes, my love letters, my diary entries by hand, as I had always done and still do and typing always just felt like a chore. I remember staring at my eager but uncoordinated hands and just getting stuck on the letters of the keyboard with my eyes. I've never been able to look up at the screen while I'm writing, never. I interned in PR. I was a university instructor and lecturer at nine to five at an editing and communication agency. I was a translator for a couple of years, always dabbled in journalism. And everywhere I worked and typed, I've been worried. And to this day, I slightly panic when someone steps next to my desk while I'm writing in this quote unquote unprofessional way. Even my friends make fun of me for my weird method. That's a nice contribution to my imposter syndrome. Mm, yeah, funnily or ironically or whatever, I've written a book, several book chapters, dozens of essays and papers, probably hundreds of articles like this, and it works for me, and the resulting texts, they don't show how I type them. I will forever be hunting and pecking with my two pointer fingers. I don't like this phrase, but it's probably too late to learn touch typing with 10 fingers by now. I measure my two finger typing and 40 words a minute, an accuracy of 96%, I'm just slightly above average and that's enough. Hey, nobody looks over your shoulder in the home office, but it gets lonely and then I go to the library and I keep working, but I also feel like I'm part of society and I get some people watching done. And when I've had enough of home office and library and my city and my country, I go on a trip. And on this trip, I thought exactly about why I want to start a YouTube channel. I mean, first I thrifted a book and I read the book at the beach and in the park. There's always some grass or a shady tree to sit and read in a park. And I look up from my book and I read my surroundings. I just love traveling. I love pretending I'm a local for a month or so, staying somewhere a bit obscure or very normal. And my awareness and my observation are heightened. And I love staying somewhere long enough to meet and recognize the same stranger twice. That's true travel to me. But of course, I also had to work, some editing, proofreading, writing, and while you watch me making up words and making money, here are my reasons for creating a YouTube channel. Number one, I got into using social media actively very late in the game. I used an old flip phone for many years that I got on day two after moving to Canada and it just never broke. And um, suddenly, in 2019, it flew out of my pocket while riding my motorcycle, and finally I got a smartphone. And finally I got off Facebook and all my friends were 
kind of awaiting me on Instagram, even though they were already getting over it actually. So instead of following them, I mostly followed magazines and celebrities instead. And since I had observed exactly how to Instagram, I got right into experimenting with all the different genres wholeheartedly. First up, I did daily stories, barely breaking my streak for three years. Basically the pandemic, who would have thought I'd get to uber document these unprecedented fucking times. And then in 2021, I did weekly selfies. In 2023, I did weekly reels. And I just started bi-weekly 10 picture photo dumps for this year. I just love a good one year project. I'm not a quitter and I suffer from completism. Once I start something, I have to finish it. Um, so doing monthly YouTube videos this year is kind of a natural progression from these other experiments, visually, technically, spiritually, culturally. It's the next step. It's the big screen, baby. Okay, beach break. And sightseeing break. I'm just taking that damn book everywhere with me. And we're back to work. All right, where was I? Um, okay, reason number two for starting this channel. I've always just been into documentation, documenting my stupid little life. From the moment I could write, I scribbled, and then I started a diary at age 10. So it's been 30 goddamn years. Um, I fell in love with photography young, but never mastered it technically, and never got into the physicality of it, only the Roland Barthes philosophy of it. But I'm artistic in a way that I know good angles and aesthetics, especially my own. <laughs> so naturally, I got into my space and I loved the designing, the coding, the selfies. I love the fact that I could put a theme song to my life. And once you clicked on my page, you knew exactly what I was about. Of, of course, just for that week, at least. And then along came Facebook. And you know me by now a bit already, daily status updates, monthly profile photo changes, whole concepts and seasonal themes, baby. I never got into Twitter, don't know why, but now I have a threads account that I abuse as my diary because after 30 years of a real pen and paper diary, I lost my book last year six months ago on a plane ride i don't want to talk about it because it's definitely a crisis some trauma maybe another time um, i just know that i need documentation i need reflecting my inside via the outside i need this form of filing away my experiences of expressing them in words and visuals or multimedia altogether there is a few phenom phenomena to describe this urge, such as athazagoraphobia, fear of forgetting or of being forgotten. I forgot which one. <laughs> um, there's life editing OCD, there's memory hoarding. I'm not alone. I might have all of that. I don't care. I don't know. But here we are. Um, so with this channel, I just hope to turn this obsession, this urge into something beautiful. I want to tell stories and in a cringy way, think of life as a movie like doing it for the plot, or rather doing it for the vlog in this case. And here's the mandatory library visit. I always gotta get in a good session in every city. You guys, I spend a lot of time in the glam sector. G-L-A-M. Galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. My kind of glam. <laughs> That's on period. Boots the house down. Work. Um, <laughs> I just recently learned about this uh, abbreviation and I love it. Okay, but let's do this real library style. I'm just gonna sit down, write, read, repeat, and shut up.
actually that might be a bit boring to watch even though that library spot looks amazing it was so sunny and silent but before I leave it and continue traveling, I gotta take this time to tell you about reason number three why I created a YouTube channel. It is all about artsiness and creativity. Creation, not recreation, and definitely not consumption. I want this to be an exercise in focus and forcing myself to learn a new technology, a new medium, and so on. I gotta trick myself into doing it before blocking myself and getting lost in scrolling or watching other people's videos. Scrolling actually isn't a big issue for me because I started using social media late and I use it pretty proactively. And because at my heart, I love long form content the most and really, truly madly deeply enjoy watching hour long analyses, documentaries, vlogs, all kinds of genres. I never had an actual YouTube account and therefore whenever I went on the website I always just saw the trending stuff plus a little bit of what the algorithm threw my way because of what I watched which is a pretty wide range of interests from mainstream to niche another time I'll tell you all about it maybe mm. but talking about long versus short form content I've made two observations First of all, it seems to be a time that many old school, big, successful YouTubers are quitting because of burnout or their channels are dying. Do people still start YouTube channels? It doesn't feel like it really. But secondly, I also see some TikTokers who want to get into vlogging because there's just no way to vlog and connect to an audience or explain your life in full in only one or five minute clips, right? I know platforms push it and with this vertical, upright, fast paced, short form content taking over, I want to be a contrarian. I want to spread out horizontally, widen my space, no timers, no quick view, just sit down, slow down, focus and create. And with all that done, I want to force myself to accountability and find motivation for my career as a writer. Look at my Google Calendar at the gate, Wee! Off we go. That flight was spectacular. I was glued to the window the whole time. The plane was pretty much coast hugging and I got all the pretty lights in the dark, California, Oregon, Washington, and back home. Just for a bit though, because boom, I took a train, baby. As a European, I essentially grew up on trains, but this was my first time ever taking the Amtrak. And it was an absolutely spectacular, relaxing four hour train ride. So here's when I'll tell you about reason number four for making this YouTube channel, purpose. I always have the urge to do something with my interests, to make something with them, of them, to turn them into a document, maybe even a product or content or a side hustle. But here with these videos, I want to zone in on simply being very interested in something, deeply into something, and sharing my interests without turning them into something so that they could be anything. I try not to make too many rules except the most important one. Done is better than perfect. 90% is enough. I have to do it like that to counteract my crippling perfectionism that prevents me from creating anything in the first place. I need to get stuff out of my system 
write and create. I don't want to stay a forever editor. I must stop editing and publish the thing. So just for the sake of it, the idea, the topic, theme, the interest in itself, it's worthy of just being looked at, talked about, connect people. Oh yeah, by the way, I have the ability to find pretty much anything interesting. Be warned. Guess where we are? That's right, we have arrived in 1961. All right, now what kind of videos will I make? Vlogs, sit downs, interviews, get published with me. I got a long list of ideas, but it'll rather be on the slow side of things. Probably more talking about than showing what I'm actually doing in my life. I wanna document what I'm writing. I wanna reflect on what I'm interested in writing about. I wanna share my research in rabbit holes and I wanna recommend other vlogs, books, movies, articles, music, etc. I hope it'll get really interactive at some point. And then how will I make these videos? Once a month, different style each time, depending on mood and material. Very incompetent, curious, I'm a beginner, joyfully experimenting, wabi-sabi style. All filmed on my phone, edited with free software, using my friend's beats as background music. I've watched so much and such different types of YouTube. I've collected inspiration like a freaking magpie and I cannot wait to do my own thing now. So subscribe if you want to see the life of a freelancer somewhere between romanticizing and realistic, between stoic and story.